Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me, Joe and Michael. Um, hi, all. My name is Hanan Brandt. I'm an investment manager at JVP, Jerusalem Venture Partners, which is one of the best and most uh, biggest uh, venture capital firms in Israel. Uh, two years ago, I founded an organization called Made in Jerusalem. We call it also Made in JLM, which is working together with different organizations to promote the startup and tech, tech ecosystem of Jerusalem. We do not work alone. That's part of uh, our uniqueness. We work with more than 10, uh, 20 organizations, startups, companies, R&D centers, investors and hubs, and academic institutions to position Jerusalem, as I said here, as one of the world leading and most supportive startups and business communities. Some of these organizations will present their uh, initiatives just after I will speak. But before we move into the uh, presentations, I want to say a couple of words. Everybody knows Jerusalem as a unique city and more very impressive one. But why is it a good place for business? And this, I think, is the topic of today's event. There's a couple of uh, things that make Jerusalem very unique and we believe can help create a startup ecosystem here. First of all, it's an international brand. There's no one in the world that doesn't know what's Jerusalem. The city of gold, 3,000 years of innovation. Um, three and a half million tourists come here, uh, come here a year. Uh, a year come here every year, and come mostly to see the, the attractions, but don't stay here to do business. Um, Jerusalem is a student city. Today, more than 40,000 students uh, are finishing their studies every year in the, year, in the city, in world-leading universities and colleges, uh, leading to a lot of new talent coming into the work in the, in the workforce every year, and of course, a lot of research that is coming out of these universities. Jerusalem is also a cultural hub with vibrant design, music, art, film, and theater scenes. And according to a lot of research, a cultural hub in a lot of cases, it has good correlation with also a startup hub. Jerusalem is also has a lot of diversity and I'm sure everybody sees it. In our events in Made in Jerusalem, we have Jews and Arabs, Christians and Muslims, uh, Haredi, Datim Leumim, Chilonim, from all colors and from all the places. And even more, I think, and I think this is relevant to this event, people that come from Israel, that were born here, and people that made Aliyah are leading to this very vibrant and diverse uh, community. And that leads me to the next and may maybe most important part, the community. Um, and I think uh, Roi, which is here with a nice Made in JLM shirt, uh, will elaborate about it a bit later. In Jerusalem, nobody is left alone. It's all about collaboration. When you go to other parts in Israel, you feel that it's a bit everyone to himself. Uh, it's not about working together. And here, what we saw since we created the Made in Jerusalem is people working together to promote each other because they understand that if they promote each other, it will benefit all of, all of the city. Um, the word we call it is Firgun. People who are saying and helping other people not, not just to get something, just to help others create their own initiative. We see the city has all the different ingredients that needed for an ecosystem. First of all, as I said, leading ac academic institutions like the Hebrew U, Azrieli College, which Michael will speak about in a second, Betzalel Academy of Arts, Hadassah, uh, JCT, and many more. Um, in addition, there's many multinational R&D centers. Cisco and Teva and Intel and many also uh, medical companies that came here after acquiring Jerusalem-based startups, Siemens and Johnson and Johnson, Covidian, IBM, which is not, not medical. Even Teva actually was uh, developed in the city in the beginning of the 20th century, so we can call it a made in JLM company. Um, in addition, there's many companies that started in the city and become bigger, like Mobileye, Medino, Ophir, and Brightsource, all are working in the city. Um, and now about investors. So I'm an investor in JVP, and I think if we would ask people two years ago which investors are in the city, people would say, well, there's JVP. But what is uh, happening recently is many different investors are joining the city, and I think it's important to mention our crowd. I see some uh, people in the crowd from our crowd, um, which is one of the leading crowdfunding uh, funds today. Did already more than, how much, 30, 40 investments? 47 investments, six out of them, I think, based on Jerusalem. So that's a great addition based just next to us in JVP. 
Uh, there's Jump Speed Ventures led by uh, Ben Wiener. Where's Ben Wiener? He's here. Okay, Ben Wiener. Uh, investing, we'll speak also later, investing in seed companies who are based only in Jerusalem, a great add-on to, to the ecosystem as well, and different and more investors like VLX and Terra and many different, and I hope we will see more investors and more angel investors come into the city when they understand the potential. Accelerators and hubs. I think this is a very new phenomenon because if you would check two years ago, none of the companies you see here, accelerators and hubs, existed. In two years, we got more than 10 new accelerators and hubs who are helping entrepreneurs moving their ideas from you know, the concept level to a stage where they can approach us as investors and get funding. And this is a very important uh, addition to the ecosystem. Last but, lastly, last but not least is the government and organizations. I think without the uh, support of the mayor, uh, Neil Balkat, who is an entrepreneur himself, one of the co-founders of Checkpoint, and the initiatives by the JDA, the JNEXT, and BioJerusalem, it would be very hard to build an ecosystem and their financial incentive and promotion is very, a very important part of what's happening here. In addition, there's many organizations um, who are dealing, some of them, with very specific uh, uh, parts of the city, like Forum Ahaitik Haredi, working with only Haredi entrepreneurs, Ruach Hadasha, working with students, uh, JDG, which is a Google development group, and many, many more, and of course the JBNF, which is doing tremendous work uh, to promote networking and business in the city. So before we start, I just want to say a couple of words. It's not only about the organization, it's also about real companies that are developed in the city. I'm sure all of you, or most of you, heard about the very strong IPO of Mobileye just, I think, two weeks ago. It's the biggest Israeli IPO ever. And since the beginning of the year, I think it's the biggest, biggest uh, tech IPO in the world, which is amazing. Uh, today, we more than, valued more than $8 billion. This was developed in Jerusalem in the Hebrew University by Professor Amnon Shashua. And what is even, I think, more amazing is Professor Shashua has time on, on his left time when he's building this huge company to create Allcom, which is another startup um, building smart glasses that help the blind see through uh, computer vision. This company raised $21 million from Intel Capital just a couple of months ago. Um, some more companies, Anyclip is a company that JVP invested in and we're very proud of. A couple of years ago, they're doing a video platform and reached number seven most viewed video platform in the world just uh, recently, surpassing Vimeo and Microsoft and Amazon and uh, we're very proud of, of them. Two additional companies I think we're going to present later on in the startup panel, Facetune and Glide, both created mobile apps that are today some of the, on the top of the uh, App Store, um, and uh, Glide also re uh, was the TechCrunch This Up finalist. Very impressive. By the way, uh, created by ultra-orthodox entrepreneurs. They don't, know, they don't like when we say that because they don't really see themselves as this company, but I think it's amazing that in Jerusalem you have entrepreneurs from every part of the society. Um, of course, the medical space. So we have Brainsway, which is also, I think, going to pre present, um, had great success in their trial in brain treatment of Parkinson's disease and depression. I think according to what I saw, they were valued at more than $700 million according to the last investment. So uh, very impressive as well. And maybe the most, the coolest startup uh, recently uh, is Zuta Labs, created by two students from uh, Mahon Lev, uh, created the fir world's first mobile printer and uh, had one of the best Kickstarter campaigns of the year, raising more than half a million dollars. So that was only part, uh, all of the companies you see here, the logos, are companies that raised money this year. Um, according to our numbers, there's more than 300 startups in the year, in the city. Half of them are in medical and biospace, and half are from software and media, advertising, uh, energy, from all different uh, kinds of companies. And you're gonna be the first people to see this slide. Um, according to the IVC, Israeli Venture Capital um, Database, since the beginning of the year, in only eight months, 36 Jerusalem-based companies raised money in a total of more than $122 million. That's just, just the numbers that we are uh, public. I'm sure there's, there's many more. Making it three times more than uh, 2012 and showing you the potential of this city. 
And it seems like we're not the only one to see it. Um, you could see articles on Mashable, on VentureBeat, Jewish Week, uh, F Fast Company, Bloomberg saying, could the next big startup scene come from Jerusalem? And our answer is, of course. So thank you very much. Now, so now we're going to move into the uh, panel. Uh, every organization here, all of them are part of this uh, renaissance of the business space in Jerusalem. We'll have three minutes to present their organization and why is it unique. Um, okay. Dav is not here? Okay. Okay, so who's starting? If it's not Nadav. Um, Okay, so the first speaker will be Josie Arbel, director at AACI, the Association of Americans and Canadians in Israel. Thank you. I'm glad I was hoping I'd be either first or last because AACI is not a startup and I'm going to leave to these people who are doing the incredible creative work that as a Roshami I'm, I'm proud of and, and happy to see happening. But AACI is a nonprofit, the Association of Americans and Canadians in Israel. It's a home for all English speakers. Um, those of you who aren't familiar, we have a combination of the service organization that helps Olim from first thinking about Aliyah to however many years afterwards on information and advice on how things work and how to manage. And on the other hand, a membership organization with social and cultural activities for English speakers of all ages and stages. So what am I doing on a panel on high tech? Um, AACI, since its founding in 1951, is all about networking. And I think in a pre-internet age, we completely understood the value and did in a very grassroots way initially and increasingly in a professional way connecting people, people with ideas to other people, people who came before to people who came later, who needed to learn the system, see who's doing what, and find their place in it. Um, you could look at Aliyah as a startup activity. You move yourself, you... Some people say reinvent. I don't like reinvent. The core of who you are will be who you are, but you have a new, a new environment in which to work, in which to create, in which to dream. I know I only have a few minutes, so I will throw something out. I don't know. How many of you made Aliyah in the last 10 years? Last five years? More than 10 years? More than 20 years? Okay. So we're a pretty diverse crowd. Um, wherever you are in the spectrum, your ability to share what you know with someone not necessarily newer, someone who's learning themselves is, I believe in the generosity of Olim to other Olim. I've seen it in action and I've seen it lead to tremendous achievements. Um, on the practical level, ACI has some emergency loans and some loan funds um, that are available to entrepreneurs. We work with several things. One loan fund that is specifically for business, also a fund that is for businesses that need either people who need retraining to do some kind of course to make your business better or you're self-employable if you're a single, a single proprietor kind of business um, and or for equipment to make your business happen. So for that, you contact ACI and if we can help you, we're happy to. Um, I will throw out years ago when I first made Aliyah myself and I came to ACI, the conventional wisdom as a new counselor was when people came to, to your desk and said, I want to start a new business in Israel, we'd say, have you worked in that industry? Before you open your, the new pizzeria, have you worked in a pizzeria in Israel? Before you open something, have you learned the industry? Have you checked out the competition, how it's done, how the system works, how you bill, how you pay taxes? Um, and we've always encouraged people to do their homework and get their tools as part of doing a business. Your being here today is part of gathering wherever you are and whatever kind of businesses you have. You're gathering information, you're gathering tools. I hope it continues to be a productive day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Josie. And now I will invite uh, Simi Hinden, which is Director of Knowledge Management at Present Tense.
So, so hi, my name is Simi, um, as Hanan said. Um, I'm from Present Tense. And Present Tense is a Jerusalem-based organization that catalyzes community entrepreneurship. Um, we do this in order to grow local economies, to enrich community life, and to solve critical issues that are facing Israeli society. Um, I'm really excited that we're actually talking about Jerusalem as a business ecosystem, because this is how um, Present Tense was founded. Um, we're a little more than two years old. We were founded in 2007, and our co-founders wanted to basically establish a, a program for social entrepreneurs to launch new ventures. Um, and they thought, what a better place to do that than in Jerusalem, which is sort of the center of the Jewish people. So they brought together a group of entrepreneurs. Um, they took over an apartment in Rechavia and brought in mentors, coaches, speakers from all walks of life in Jerusalem, whether it was from um, high tech or venture capital or people from the nonprofit world or from education. Um, and use that to help, ten, uh, help launch 10 exciting ventures, several of which are still active today. Um, so our model is based on taking the lessons um, and the ideas from the startup nation and bringing it to all entrepreneurs, to bringing it people from all walks of Israeli life, um, all geographies, all populations, um, and really doing that to, I guess, to um, basically grow entrepreneurs wherever they are in Israel and around the world. Um, so we call this, rather than building the startup nation, we call it building the ground up nation. Um, and this is part of all the activities that we run today. So first we have Venture Accelerators, which are um, six to nine month programs for entrepreneurs. We run them in partnership with local community organizations. Um, we're running eight programs in Israel this year in 20, 2014 to 2015, including two in Jerusalem. So we have a program, um, Yezamim, which is for Jerusalem-based social entrepreneurs. Um, and this is going to be entering its sixth year. Um, and we also have a new program that we launched in partnership with Temech um, for uh, Haredi women who are growing small businesses. Um, in addition to our venture accelerators, we also run workshops and seminars for groups and organizations who want to learn more principles of entrepreneurship and starting up businesses. Um, and lastly, we also have a co-working hub. Um, it's one of the earliest co-working hubs in Jerusalem. It was founded in 2008, I believe, and we're located on um, Hillel Street in downtown Jerusalem. Um, it's a place for entrepreneurs, freelancers, um, small organizations to rent space or to, have a, um, to find a collaborative working environment. Um, and we offer consulting office hours as well. And we also have a variety of events, lectures, and seminars going on at the Hub. Um, so it's been really exciting to help shape Jerusalem's entrepreneurial environment over the past seven years. And really excited for what the next seven brings for us. So thanks. Thanks, Simi. Uh, now I want to invite Shandy Baba, the director of Temach. It's fortunate you called me up after Simi. Now everybody knows about our incubator. Anyhow, I'm Shandy Baba. I'm the CEO of Temach. Um, Temach is a nonprofit based in Jerusalem. Can you hear me? Oops. And we're active all over Israel, 19 cities across the country, actually. Um, our mission is to help women, specifically religious women, to empower them and support them in their quest to build careers and as entrepreneurs. You've heard a lot about what's going on in the business scene here in Jerusalem. There are a couple of amazing projects. So what am I offering and what am I adding to this evolving and very interesting process? To frame what Temech does and why we do it and what our Jerusalem Hub has to offer, I want to take a step back. Um, I am an Ola. And um, when I came on Ola, Aliyah, I um, came like most Olim with a lot of gung-ho idealism and all of that. And I realized very quickly that at least in the business scene here in Israel, at least back then, I had three counts against me in my personal description. I was an Ola, I'm from, and I'm a woman. So um, that's street psychs. And whenever I introduced myself, people started thinking about snoods and lots of barefoot kids and even more chalant. Um, but that's wrong, okay, and uh, the Jerusalem Hub project that we run proves that. The Jerusalem Hub is, first of all, located on the corner of Sari Israel and, and uh, Yafo in the Sharia Air building, and it is the product of innovation and input and initiative of very professional and very entrepreneurial women themselves, and what we've tried to build is a platform that would help women pursuing their careers, pursuing their entrepreneurial um, dreams, to um, build out their dreams. And we see all kinds of businesses. Since we opened in 2014, yes, this year, we've seen over 400, 400 women-owned businesses, 
all across the spectrum. Some of them are very, very exciting. I say new businesses, I say young businesses, because some of them are really just young and they have a lot of potential, and even serial business owners. And what does the hub offer? The hub offers, first of all, a steeply discounted working space. We have a co-working space, we have desks, we have rooms, we have meeting rooms, we have a beautiful patio so that women can meet each other. We have networking events. We believe that's the heart of it, getting women to talk to each other about the ideas, support each other, and building the ideas, one-to-one, -one, top tier uh, advice and mentoring. We have workshops, we have courses, and lots of other things going on. So I see a lot of guys in the audience, but I'm sure you all know women who can uh, benefit, and please feel free. Besides for that, Temech um, is really active in a lot of other spheres. Our focus today is on the Jerusalem Hub, but Temech itself is very involved in career development and employment for women, and we've um, created jobs for over 4,500 women in the last four years across the country. So we have other things running like conferences for entrepreneurs, for business women seeking employment or advancement, all kinds of professional uh, advancement courses. And we launched recently our forum, which is called Ksharim, or Connections, ksharim.org.il. We have a booth out here, and you're welcome to join and take a look at what we're doing. We're going places. You might as well join. Thanks, Shane. And now, after three women entrepreneurs speakers, we'll have uh, Michael Mizrahi from uh, Atobi Israeli College, which is, I think, you're going to be the first ones to hear about because it's just opened now. So, Michael. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael Michael. Uh, I want to thank JBNF for the opportunity to present the Jerusalem College of Engineering. For those who doesn't know, the institute we teach only engineering in eight different departments. Um, uh, our entrepreneurship center is offering everybody here uh, membership at our entrepreneurship club. We meet monthly uh, for a networking cocktail and two lectures on a business-related subject. Uh, the meetings are free, and uh, our next uh, uh, meeting, uh, the registration for our next meeting is on our website. Uh, another thing that we are offering entrepreneurs is a non-academic, very serious uh, uh, course, uh, 10 sessions course, uh, on how to develop your technological idea into a startup company. And uh, of course, our A to B, uh, six months uh, new accelerating program. And uh, we are offering chosen participants uh, full academic supports and lab supports, amazing workspace, and every facility that you need in order to develop your own startup. Intensive uh, and uh, fascinating program. And uh, Support, support package given by our partners, Microsoft Ventures, Indiegogo, Deloitte, Igal Arnon, Galili Perl, Stern Arielli, Dale Carnegie Heigelad, Gaia, Banca Poalim, the Israeli Free Loan Association, eh, Baba by Bezalel, and the eh, Made in Jerusalem. And the next speaker is Ziv Bar Shishat from Jerusalem, the first place for makers in Jerusalem. Hi, I'm Ziv, and I'm a tech social entrepreneur. And with my partners, we've uh, built Jerusalem. Jerusalem, I'll talk about it a bit later. I have a question for you. Um, have anyone here heard about the third industrial revolution? Anyone? OK, a few of you. Well, the third industrial revolution speaks about giving power to create and manufacture everything at home, at your home. And, well, part of the power, most of the power of this revolution is based on people called makers. What is makers, you may ask? Makers are people who like to build stuff, who like to tinker with stuff, and like to share about the whole process of it. Why do they do it? Well, a maker probably most of the time builds something just to um, um, make it more customized, more custom fit to his needs. And 
what I think um, customization leads to innovation. Um, and sometimes, you know, you want to buy something, but it's not on the market, so what leads makers to actually to make it is to, to fit it to their needs, so they, um, they use um, tools like 3D printers. Who here uh, heard about 3D printing? Oh, lots of you, much more. Well, at Jerusalem, we have two 3D printers waiting just for you to come and use it. And we have also a workshop uh, for metal and woodworking, and soon we'll have a laser cutter machine. And a part of the maker's community is the maker spaces, much like Jerusalem. Because makers need a place to come and walk and build their dreams, and not everyone can do it at home. So this is this is the place for the makers, okay? But, you know, not everyone is born a maker. So we were offering you um, workshops and courses in 3D printing, in programming, in electronics, and much, much more um, to help you become makers yourself. You and your kids, actually. And what else? Um, I also uh, wanted to say that uh, we're a non-profit organization. We're uh, supported by Musrara School of Art, and we sit at uh, Musrara a neighborhood at Beit Canada um, Community Center. And we're just waiting for you to come and visit and help you build your stuff, build your dreams. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ziv. What Ziv forgot to say that he has also his own startup that is today uh, in Siftec Accelerator and is trying to help you sleep better at night. If you want to, to know more, ask, ask Ziv about it.